Hey there guys, it's Tina and I am back and I am fuzzy and comfy. I got this sweater from, where did I get this sweater? I think I, let me think about this, hold up. This was from Target and it was on sale, it was on clearance. So I think I got it for like $10 and I was like, ooh, it's all cozy, it is warm, it does, it's not scratchy at all, it's very soft and I am very happy about it. So let me enjoy my sweater. And I am doing a fun look, well, a simple look. It's not a, it's not like extravagant or anything, but it's a fun look featuring this palette here. It's a new palette from Dominique Cosmetics. I recently picked it up. It's the Latte 2 palette, and I'm doing a matte look from the matte shades in the palette. And I really love how this turned out. We also catch up on some things that I want to incorporate into my channel and into my videos. And like, we'll talk about some stuff, but yeah if you want to see this get ready with me featuring this look then stay tuned and i will talk to you soon all right guys so as usual we're starting off with a it's not a clean freshly washed fit well i mean i did wash my face already but the point is i already have moisturizer on from La Mer, using it up, discussed before, and I filled in my brows with my Benefit Brow Pencil, and I have concealer under my brows as well. So we have all that prepped and ready to go so we can jump right into the eye look. And today we're doing a very simple all matte look, at least what I think is going to be an all matte look, so that's what we're going for and we're gonna stick to it, okay? So I'm gonna use my MAC Lane Low Paint Pot and I'm gonna apply this all over my lids using a Zoeva 110 Face Shape Brush and this is synthetic and it's large. It's meant for like concealer and all that stuff but I just want a quick wash of this product all over my lid to prime my eyelids for the eyeshadows and it kind of gives me a matte base starting out as well. I already have eyeshadow primer down, so that's my Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion. I always apply that, okay, because it just helps to seal in the oils in my lids, and I feel like it gives me a barrier between eyeshadows and eyeshadow bases and all that, so... That's what I like to do. So we're gonna grab the Latte 2 palette, as I mentioned, from Dominique Cosmetics. And it's this right here. And I wasn't gonna pick this palette up until I saw it in store and swatched it. I was like, you know what? I'm okay with this. And I do like the Dominique Cosmetics eyeshadow formula. I didn't like, what was that, the Lemonade palette, and then it was the Celestial Storm palette, but then I got the Celestial Thunder in the Boxy Charm, which is the abbreviated version, and I love that. So I said, you know what, let me pick this up. So we're going to go into this palette, and I'm grabbing the Mustard Yellow shade, which is called Blonde Roast. Let's zoom in a bit. I was thinking how it's interesting that I haven't used my Lane Low Paint Pot in so long and it's the paint pot that I used to use the eyeshadow base that I used to use all the time and I love it this is a detail pro brush from Sonia G but I used to love that base so much and then since everybody started using like cream bases like the NYX jumbo pencil and then we started using like shade sticks and then we varied into like cream eyeshadows and then everybody started using concealer it's almost like I forgot how great the paint pots are. But they are fantastic and I love Lane Low. And the interesting thing about Lane Low is that it was limited edition, right? And I wanted to cry when I saw that it was a perfect shade for my skin tone. Like, look at that. It works beautifully if I'm just doing a wash of color and I just want something to blank out my lids. So I'm just um, running this color in my crease using windshield wiper motions. But yeah, it's such a perfect tone for my skin tone, right? And it was limited edition and I was pissed off and fed up and I spoke about it so much and then they actually released it as a permanent shade. I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. And I feel like I had something to do with that because I spoke about it so much. I'm gonna take that and just let me have things, okay? So now that we have that down, that's just gonna give us kind of a transition shade in the crease. I feel like these shades may be a little bit too deep, but we're gonna go in with Cafecito. 
this red tone brown. It's a very rich color, so I'm just gonna lightly pick this up on a refer number 16 brush. And this brush has a little bit of a point to it, but it has kind of splayed bristles going downwards. This is gonna give me too harsh of a line and this brush is not exactly the softest. Okay, so I'll just grab the Sonia G brush again and go over that crease area. Okay, we're gonna need to really blend with this because I put a little bit too much pressure in the crease with that brush and it left me kind of a harsh line. So let's just go back and forth windshield wiper motions and then circular motions to buff that out but it's interesting to see how makeup has evolved on YouTube and what we're using now versus what we used before it's just a different beast right now and I love it I love it and I hate it at the same time because I feel like it's so saturated and I'm losing the zest. I'm not as interested in new releases anymore. I'm not as excited, but that's a good thing for my wallet. So it's a, uh, it's a catch 22 cause I lose the thrill and the excitement, but I save some money. Well, I'm not even saving that much. Let's be honest. Cause I'm still buying foolishness, but I'm going to just, that color is really intense. I feel like they could have benefited from a medium tone brown because the other shade in the palette the cafe con leche this one here is very light but i might try it i might mix yeah let me take a little bit of it and try to apply it on the outer lid just to soften up that color a bit it's not doing the damn thing is it i mean a little bit i guess i can mix the two color oops mix the two colors together and try that way so i have returned from italy and i spent two and a half weeks in italy switzerland and germany so i went back and forth and when i came back to the office i went in for one day and like I mentioned that I just came back from Italy and like the day that I returned was when the news broke about some cases of the coronavirus. What is it called? The COVID-19 virus. Apparently there were some cases reported in Lombardy, which is close to Milan and like some other surrounding areas. So they were put on quarantine and I was around that area so when I came back, I was like, wow, you know, I came back. I, I, you know, I don't feel sick, but you never know. And at the actual airport, they do a temperature scan just to check to see if you have a fever or anything. And I was fine and I'm still fine. I checked my temperature. That's what I've been constantly doing, like checking my temperature, monitoring to make sure that I'm fine because I was around sick people. People were coughing. And I don't know if it was the weather because it was rainy and it was cold. I'm going to go in with the darker brown, which is Coffee Bean now on the same Sonia G brush. I find that I'm using this Sonia G brush quite a lot and I use it for almost all the eyeshadows that I apply unless I'm applying like a full on lid shade. But it just works so well and it's a large size brush but it works in my crease area with my lid space so I just love it but I was just monitoring myself right because I came back a couple days before I went back to work and I mentioned it in the cafeteria and someone overheard me and went to HR <laughs> And mentioned that you know they were nervous they were like Tina just came back from one of the affected areas in Italy and I don't feel comfortable which you know what I accept if you don't feel comfortable and so I got a call from my manager saying you know the corporate policy and we do have a policy on that like we had something put out that if you travel to these areas if you were coming back from China or Japan and a couple of my colleagues actually came back from those places but Italy was added to the list they asked you to just stay home you know not because you're banned or quarantined or anything but it's just as a precautionary measure and I you know I can honor that I respect that so I have been home I haven't been sick 
I've been quarantined. It's not like it's a mandatory quarantine, but I feel like just to keep everybody safe, I'm gonna stay home at least for the first few days to see how I feel. Like if I get sick and I've been monitoring my temperature, like I said, I have my thermometer and I'm like, oh, you know, I check my temperature and if I feel any kind of icky, I'm like checking myself. But I stayed home for the first couple of days, like for the full week and just stayed inside i already did my grocery shopping i'm just gonna keep blending as i talk i don't necessarily need to keep blending but you know why not so i just stayed home as a precaution i already had my groceries and stuff so i didn't need to go out and get anything and i just did that because i don't know what's going on i don't know how i'm gonna feel and i always get sick when i return from trips especially a trip as long as that i usually get like a sore throat and a fever and i just feel icky and that's just from traveling you know the recycled air in airplanes and then you go to airports and then you're around all these people and everybody's coughing and farting and it's just i just get sick and if they're smoking especially in the countries that i visit so europe a lot of european countries europeans smoke a lot and I didn't realize how much they smoked versus how much they smoke here in New York. When you are in New York, you have smokers around, right? But it's not, it seems like more, more people vape and it seems like more people are not smoking anymore or they reserve it for certain time. I don't know, but it seems like less people smoke in the states than they do in Europe. Europe is just more commonplace. I feel like I tend to have an upper respiratory situation when I come back just from the exposure to all the cigarette smoke because I'm not used to it. But I usually feel fine after a few days. So I stayed home and just made sure I was fine. But I'm fine, I'm not sick. My mom has been calling me, my brother has been calling me. Everybody's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. So I'm gonna go in with Frothy, which is the vanilla shade. And I think I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of the Cafe Con Leche, just to get a light wash on the lid. So I feel fine. I'm not sick. I haven't come down with anything. I haven't gotten tested, which that's why I'm like, just in case I'm a carrier and I'm not sick myself, doesn't mean it's not still here. So I'm taking it seriously, but at the same time, I'm not restricting myself too much because I have gone out now. It's been over a week, so I'm a little bit more comfortable going out and being around people. So I've been out. It's definitely self-imposed, me staying home. I don't like going out anyway, so it's not like a big deal for me to stay home. But yeah, that's what's been going on. And I have been watching a lot of Netflix. And I feel like I want to do videos talking about the different shows. I'm going to go in with the frothy shade as a highlight under my brow. I want to do, uh, like, I don't know how I should do it. Oh, that is very light. So I'm just going to use a little bit. I don't know how I should do those kinds of videos. Should we just apply makeup and plain makeup and talk about series because sometimes I feel like when I'm doing makeup it turns out into a nice look that I want to share with you guys but then the videos are so long that I'm like no one's gonna watch this but I mean I guess it's not that big a deal right but I want to do probably let me know how you feel about this like get ready with me videos like makeup and chill where we talk about Netflix shows and just have a good time talking about um, Love is Blind, what the hell. Um, <laughs> if you haven't watched that yet, definitely watch it. And it would be videos that are full of spoilers. So I'm gonna apply a liquid liner. I haven't applied like winged liner in a bit. So this is the Sephora Long Lasting Eyeliner in the shade Black. This one has the felt tip applicator. But it would have to be, should I use a brown, like a dark brown versus a black? Um, no, I'm gonna, mm, feel like, ooh, maybe, mm, do I have a dark brown liquid liner? Yes, I do. This is from L'Oreal. It's the Infallible Super Slim Liquid Liner, and the shade I have is brown. Let's see how this goes. I can always go over it with black if I don't like it. So, Love is Blind, what the hell, right? Anyway, I would obviously be talking about the series and there would be spoilers because it would be something that I already watched completely. Oh, that brown looks nice! Come through, L'Oreal! So, 
obviously you would have to have watched it already or be fine with spoilers because I'm going to be talking about the whole show and talking about my feelings. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. So like I said, Love is Blind is one of them because that was like a whole thing. I was screaming at the TV a lot and then I ended up, when we got to the weddings, so the premise of the show, and I'm not gonna give it away, but so the show is centered around people meeting each other blindly. So they're only speaking to each other through walls and they're in pods, that's what they're calling them. So they're in little isolated rooms and they can't see each other, but they can speak to each other. So they interact with each other for a few days and pick a mate, like a person that they're interested in, like they wanna pursue something further with, they wanna meet in person and they choose these people by proposing to them. Like, excuse me? That's the only way they got to meet each other is if they said, let's get married. And I'm like, first of all, what? And then they meet each other in person once the proposal is accepted. So if I propose to you, I say, hey, will you marry me? You're like, yeah, I like you after five days. Then, I meet you and you give me the ring and all that stuff and then they go off and get to know each other more and then the finale is a wedding and this is where you see if they choose to stay together or they s separate whatever so that's the overall premise of the show and I was just sitting here like all right let's see what this is all about and why do I have three Too Faced mascaras in my drawer? I don't know what's going on. Let's go ahead and apply that. So I sped through like the majority of the finale, like the wedding part, because I was just at that point tired of the storylines from the couples because they're dragging this out, right? They're singing the same old song, whatever. And I knew right away the people who would have actually gotten married like actually said yes to each other and i already saw it happening and there's only one of the couples that i was like yeah this seems like it will work because the guy is super sweet the girl seems super sweet too and i think they're a great match they have some obstacles to overcome but i feel like they're invested and interested, so I wish them the best. The other couple, I'm just like, mm, I don't know. And yeah, so we can talk about that. Like, I want to talk about that with somebody because it don't make no sense. And then, um, what's the other stuff that I watched? Um, sex Education. Love that. I love that series so much. They better, they better have a third season because I love that show. And then we have, of course, You. And I can't wait for season three. Oh my God, it's gonna be crazy. But that's a series that really surprised me in a pleasant way. Because the first season, I was like, I don't know where they're going with this, but I like it. I like it a lot, and I don't know how they're gonna improve it for this, for season two. And then season two came and freaking blew my mind. It got better. So I'm like, I can't wait to see what they do with season three. Hopefully they don't ruin it, but whoo! And then I watched How to Get Away with Murder. I watched all seasons now, so I, there were only five seasons, right? Are they redoing that? Like, is there another season coming up? Because they ended on, like, a dead note. There was something that wasn't complete. So, is there gonna be a season seven to that? I don't know what's going on. But those are, like, the shows that I can talk about for sure. Sex Education, How to Get Away with Murder, You, and Love is Blind. Of course, there are others, you know, but we can start out with those because those seem to be shows that people are interested in and they want to see. Do I need lashes? What you guys think? Should I put lashes on? This is a dry Too Faced mascara. I'm testing it out to see if I need to just get rid of this one. Because, like I said, there are three in my drawer right now. And I know 
some of them are dried out but they work great when they're dried out for layering so i don't know anyway so i want to do that let me know what you guys think about that and i also want to do like different types of things on my channel but i'm not sure how to incorporate certain things but whatever we're gonna do it right i know people are talking about seeing car chats i'm just gonna use my ex1 invisaware for my foundation people are asking about car chats and the thing about it is i just don't want to chat in my car i don't mind talking about things like topics on my channel but i don't you know sometimes you just don't want to talk in your car you can't be bothered and i'm not like driving a long distance so it takes a little longer than my commute to cover certain topics so i want to transition that into me sitting here and talking to you rather than having to be in my car but i feel like once people see me in my car they associate that with a juicy topic and like they're they're stuck to that so i don't know how to transition out of a car chat to just sitting here and chatting about the same thing i would chat about in the car to you guys hmm or maybe i just need to go sit in my car and just record when i have the time or when i feel like doing one of these videos and do it that way i don't know but anyway foundation really good you know what i was using this naked skin uh, weightless complete coverage concealer the shade the shade which shade is this one um minanoir the shade popped off but what's even worse is that the freaking applicator popped off too. So now I'm just like, I don't like, I don't like what's going on. But I'm using this up, so I have this one and this one. So I'll probably just swap the applicators as I go, like, just to use it all up. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and just use it right now. So this shade is dark neutral. And I'm just going to apply that under my eyes to cover up some of that darkness. Why am I so dark under here? Uh-uh. But I hope you guys are staying safe with the, the, um, the virus that's spreading. I don't know how many people are affected. And it seems that it's easily spread. And a lot of people get it. But there aren't as many deaths percentage-wise as the regular flu like the flu kills tens of thousands of people every season and we don't hear that much about it because it's usually people with underlying conditions and then you have a flu shot so there are ways to to help treat it but people die in the tens of thousands each year from the flu but this virus is of course like it's almost causing a panic because i guess there's so little information there's no vaccination for it there's no shot that you can get i'm actually using some of my synchro skin from shiseido mixed in with the the ex1 foundation i don't know why i just feel like it but um it seems like because there's so little information and we don't know what's happening i think that's causing more of the pandemonium but again i don't know how serious is it like the reports of the numbers have been sketchy no one knows the origin of it no one knows like what's going on i think it's the unknown that's driving us crazy right now and so i hope you guys are staying safe and i hope um, you guys aren't being affected and if you are I hope that you can recover soon because it I don't like I don't like the unknown and I think that's what's scaring most people is just the unknown like what is it where is it how is it you know all right on the lower lash line I feel like we should stick to the palette and use this teal shade on the lower lash line what do you guys think this minty teal let's see all right so i'm gonna go in with a pencil liner this is from sephora it is the shade staying alive number 36 and it's just a beautiful matte teal color i love these liners like look at that the color pops out it's matte it's long wearing 
it's waterproof and it doesn't irritate my eyes I think that much I don't know if it does oh my god my eyes have been doing better I have been going through it I used a couple of eyeshadow palettes recently I kind of irritated my eyes and yeah I'm hoping it the liner doesn't add to the irritation pray for me so we're gonna go in with the minty shade here it's called matcha and I'm just gonna run that on the outer lower lash line this brush is scratchy as hell oh hell no this is a makeup shack t52 brush that was awful so I'm gonna go in with my Mac 242 and run along the outer lower lash line now this is a very light wash of color it's not too intense and I'm gonna apply lower lash mascara so that my lashes stand out because right now it just looks like really pale right my Mac extended play is in my luggage so I don't feel like going for it so I'm just gonna use this one from Essence which is the last the lash princess volume mascara in the orange tube and that does fine not an issue but I'll just run through it with a spoolie to clean up any of the extra product and just buff again on the lower lash line because there's like black smudges so yeah that looks good let's figure out the rest of the face and yeah let me think about this for a second all right so let's go ahead and finish up with the cheeks so I'm grabbing one of my blushes that I haven't actually used yet this is from Mac it's flirting with danger it's a mineralized blush and I'm just gonna pop that on my cheeks really quickly this is probably not the brush I need to be using <laughs> this is a J201 powder brush from Juvia's Place I find myself just grabbing any old brush any old brush for a blush it's like I don't care what it is I'm just gonna pop it on and I'm not a big blush wearer anyway so it's not a big deal for me this color is just a really subtle color on my skin like I said I don't really care about blush that much and for my highlight I'm gonna use this one from black up it's a sublime light highlighter compact in the shade it don't even have a shade it just says oh it's number four it's this shimmery bronze and I'm just gonna pop that right on top of that color on my cheeks and I'm not a crazy highlight person so this subtle glow that's happening is what I like this is a refer number 18 brush and for the lips I kind of feel in the 90s vibes so we're going in with this lipstick from Pat McGrath it's the matte trans lipstick in the shade 19 and 95 and it's a very nude lip I wonder if I should go in with a lip liner um I don't know I'm not gonna keep it matte I don't think even though I like the 90s vibe with the matte eyes and all of that jazz I still don't want to keep it completely matte so I'm gonna go in with this new lip gloss from Fenty Beauty it's hot chocolate and every time I read this am I the only one I read it as hot chocolate click and I know I shouldn't, but um, that's what it looks like. I know it's supposed to be chocolate lit, like I'm lit, but it looked like clit. Don't mind me. So I'm just gonna pop this on. It's a shimmery dark brown gloss, but it shares out, as you can see, but it's still gonna add some depth to this lip color, so I didn't need to go in with a lip liner at all so boom mm -hmm. I really like how this turned out guys what do you guys think I love a matte neutral eye with a pop of color on the lower lash line and I don't mind a shimmer on the lid but something about matte looks just always gets me and the older I get 
with more lines on my eyelids, the more I want a matte look and very simple looks too. I love a colorful look, but if I'm doing a colorful look, I want it to be matte because to me, it doesn't accentuate the lines in my lids. So I stay away from shimmer a lot, but this look, yes. And then the lips, I absolutely love this. So what do you guys think? I like this palette a lot. It did take a little extra blending for me because I created a harsh line with the um, the brush that I was using. But overall, I still think these blend out pretty easily, pretty nicely on the eyes. And they give a beautiful look. I like it and I like the, um, what is this? The Dominique Cosmetics eyeshadow formula. I think I might pick up one of her other palettes. What's the other one that I didn't get? There was the Lemonade palette, which I definitely don't want, and I think that's even been discontinued. But there's another one that has like a blue in it and a berry. You know what? Maybe not. I don't really like those colors. So I'm oh, forget it. If she comes out with something else, I'll probably look at it. But for now, I'll stick to the evil that I know. But as usual, I'm going to go ahead and leave a full list of all the products used and mentioned in this video down below in the description box, along with links on where you can pick them up. If those links have an asterisk next to them, and or they take you to Sephora and Ulta, then that means they're affiliate links, which means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through those links. If you're not comfortable with that, just shop the way you normally shop, no muss, no fuss, but if you do shop through my links, thank you so much. It does help me to put right back into the channel because you know, it's a thing, you know? And it doesn't change the actual retail price. It's the same price. It's just giving me credit for putting you on. So I do appreciate that. Thank you so much if you use my links. I'll also leave links to my Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, where you should be following me along. We have fun over there. And I think that's it. Let me know what you guys want me to do as far as the car chats, like, I think I'm just gonna go sit in my car and talk, but I don't want to go outside in the cold. I mean, as it warms up, I'm gonna do more of that, but still, you know what I mean? And then as far as the Netflix and chill, like the makeup and chill stuff where we can talk about different Netflix series. If you have recommendations to, you know what? I don't wanna ask for recommendations cause then I get bombarded with recommendations and I can't take them all. So I'm just gonna go off of what I feel like I wanna watch. But if you think there's something that I should really, re that, make sure it's a good suggestion, guys, before you all get me caught up in this stuff. Make sure it's great, and then I'll check it out, and we can chat about it. I also watched um, Making a Murderer. I didn't mention that one. The second season, I put it off and put it off and put it off because that whole case just irritated the hell out of me, and I didn't feel like, like getting into it anymore. To me... It's like he served 18 years on a false charge. This is Stephen Avery. If you watched it, you know what I'm talking about. But he served 18 years, I think, on a false charge. And I think that time should count towards his sentence now. So in all, he served 28 years so far or close to 30. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who killed the girl. I don't know what's happening. All I know is... Something is screwy with the case, especially with Brandon, his nephew. He was underage, he was a minor, and he has a mental disability. Like, you can uh, you can hear it in his voice. He's obviously very childlike. He doesn't know what the hell's happening. I don't wanna, uh, you know what, get me worked up, but we can talk about that too. And yeah, I'm gonna go now because I'm getting, yeah, and I have some more videos to film for you guys. So if you see this outfit again, just know, Doing another video. Alright? I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!